हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सताल अलोहा ओला चाओ एंड बॉन्जर इट्स सो गुड टू बी विथ यू टुडे एंड I know you'll be extra happy you're with me today because we have a very special guest my friend and my brother in Islam and faith Omar so brother Omar please just jump right in and tell us more about who you are and what you do Okay uh first of all I'd love to thank you for inviting me to do this with you uh mm-hmm. been looking forward to this and so uh thank you very much So a little bit about me. Uh my name is Omar Ben Musa. I am uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Tawhid Spiritual Unity of the Three Principles uh, Tawhid Mentoring Academy and the co-host of Tawhid Spiritual Unity of the Three Principles show and webinar series. And uh just to give you a little bit of my about myself and uh, to share with you about my story and how my journey began. into you know self development and trying to know more about who i really am so uh, you know when i was 15 years old i uh, you know came across the secret uh, mm-hmm. documentary and uh, um i'm actually moroccan i live in casablanca so this happened in casablanca my english teacher showed us uh this documentary called the secret and like i like we had the uh, one class a week of english and it wasn't enough for us you know to learn the language so back in the days i didn't know how to speak the language but he showed us this documentary and uh, because i really loved that you know that teacher i went home and then i decided to just watch the documentary and so i did and it was in french like i i watched it in french because i wasn't able to understand english and when i watched that the documentary it really blew my mind mm. and i was like wow you know i didn't know that our mind is so powerful that we could you know uh, visualize stuff and you know I, we could achieve what we want and i was like just like i should have known this ages ago like why didn't anyone told me about this so i was really excited and this is how my journey started and i wasn't into books but when i watched that documentary i started i started reading books i started reading books about law of attraction i started reading books uh about self development that led me to know tony robbins and then all this famous you know uh motivational speaker out there so i was like you know my friend noticed the change in me and was like what happened with you like you're always positive and smiling like what what's wrong you're like nothing wrong you have to ask what's right yeah <laughs> and so um you know just to fast forward this i uh went to study in england in 2013 and this is where actually you know my dream came true when i actually you know went to the seminars like all the speakers i wanted to you know to uh, you know to attend their their stuff i was so excited and uh, i started learning mm-hmm. and you know like uh the, the first year i studied english and uh when i studied the language then i started studying business and management for one year and a half um and during that time i was always reading books you know always trying to find what's 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 coming up next you know if there is any events i could go to and so i used to i used to go to these events and meet a lot of you know fun people and have this positive circle of friends but something you know something was missing like you know when i was trying to apply the law of attraction and all this you know positive affirmations and yeah. these techniques i still felt mm-hmm. like you know i feel bad sometimes like maybe mm-hmm. i'm not doing it right mm-hmm. there is something that i should read or something that i should know about and i was always asking myself this question like why 
Am mm. I not being able to attract everything I want in my life, like those people? Yeah. And so in 2017, I was still in London, still living in London. And um, I went to a seminar uh, that was led by a friend of mine. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that he was a coach. And I was like fascinated about coaching and becoming a coach. And I was like sharing and like I was trying, always trying to help people and I meet them. Um, and just, you know, making videos and sharing them on YouTube. And so this friend of mine invited me to, to his seminar. And the speaker was uh, Dr. Keith Blevins. He's a clinical psychologist and he's sharing a new paradigm of how the mind works. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, so this sounds like something I already know about. And so I went to this seminar and this is where this uh, fascinating thing happened. I mean, the first day was so boring for me because I was expecting people jumping all over the place. Like, you know, when I, when I used to go to Tony Robbins seminars and all these other self-development seminars. And I was like, why is everyone sitting down and just listening to this guy trying to find his words? Like, come on, just speak it up and have some confidence. But I didn't know back then that he was trying to explain or to share with us something that was about to change my life completely. He was trying to, to explain how the mind works and something is spiritual in its own essence that doesn't have form, using words. It's really hard. There is no right word to share about something spiritual. You know, mm. we talk about uh, our in, inner space or, you know, that space that we reach when we meditate, for example. And so I was asked, I was bombarding Dr. Keith with questions and he was like, Omar, no, it's not this. You're not listening. I was like, in my in my mind, I was like, what do you mean I'm not listening? Of course I am. Like, <laughs> come on. But he was talking about another kind of listening from a blank slate without trying to project what I already know to what he was trying to say or to share or to point at. And so I don't know how I came back the second day. I think it, just because my, uh, my friend invited me and it would be like such a bad, you know, uh, gesture for me to not come back. I went the second day and this is where actually this happened to me. Like I just got this moment where the guy was speaking and I didn't know what I was speaking about. I thought I knew, but I didn't. And then I went like, Omar, just stop being arrogant about it. Like, you don't know what this guy is talking about. And then my, my, you know, little mind and my, you know, precious thinking just settled down. And this peace emerges to the surface. This mm -hmm. beautiful feeling of, you know, uh, some people call it aloha feeling. I just felt so good that, you know, normally for me to feel this way, I have to meditate for like, you know, a week or two every day and I was like you know I knew that this is something to do with the guy, what, what, with what the guy said but I didn't know what, what happened exactly I just knew that I'm in any good feeling and so this is actually where I decided to just dig deep and try to learn more about what this guy is, is sharing about and it turns out that he's sharing about a paradigm called inside out paradigm which is uh, uh, that we feel our thinking moment to moment and we have a thought generated experience of life that thought comes before feeling mm. and that everything we feel 100% of our feelings are coming from thought in the moment and I was like, what? No, that's true. But, you know, I felt good. So there is something in there. So this is where I actually started heading that direction. And uh, after three months, uh, I was into a psychology degree. And after like three months, my classmates noticed this change in my behavior. They were like, 
the what happened with you you're like much calmer and you are you seems like you know you you're happy you're and i was like wasn't i happy before <laughs> it was like no you were complaining a lot and this and that and even you know focusing on my studies and uh you know i i just felt more present with people more connected to life and just overwhelmed with this beautiful feeling of presence and uh and life you know i started enjoying life more and i thought that i was enjoying life trying to do these positive techniques every day and wake up and say i'm loving i'm loving i'm loving i'm amazing i'm amazing i'm amazing and uh, all what i've learned from self development world just fell apart mm. for me it just stopped making sense to me and what starts making sense is that i don't need to fix something that doesn't need fixing i just saw that who i truly am and who we truly are can't be touched can't be damaged Mm. And once we see who we truly are beyond our thinking beyond our busy mind you know life become a beautiful experience mm. we stop getting caught up in our upset feelings about people about you know we stop stressing a lot and so yeah um this is uh my journey and uh yeah just uh, if you have any question or anything that you would love me to share about more i have lots of questions <laughs> my first question sure. is yeah my first question is you just said something that for a lot of people might sound very mysterious you're talking about who you really are who are you really what did you discover about who you really are beyond your thoughts and your busy mind yeah you know like uh, most of my life i believe that i am the body mm. and i am happy because i bought a new phone or i'm happy because i got a new job or i'm happy because i have this amazing you know girl in my life or i have this and that and so when i came across this understanding it just became obvious to me that everything i see around me is created and generated within me mm. and those feelings i'm experiencing is coming from me it's emanating from deep inside of me and so when i think that oh i love the sea and i go to the beach for example and i think and i feel good and then i project my thinking and i think oh it's because of the beach it's like um, you know i i take with me this snow globe and i shake it i shake it shake it shake it and we have all these little snows all over, over the snow globe and when i go to this place that i think i'll feel good in for example the beach i just put the snow globe and you know this little snow settle down and the natural state of the snow globe is clarity mm. is peace is love and so when my busy mind and thinking my thought stopped you know settled down clarity emerged to the surface joy emerged to the surface peace and all those beautiful things i was looking for outside of me and so who we, we truly are really is that innate health is that innate peace is that space that cannot be put into words but we the only way actually to feel it is to experience it and don't take my word for it but you know just experience it for yourself and see like if you really feel the way you feel because of what you see in front of you where is that feeling coming from is it really coming from outside of me 
or my thinking about what's outside of me. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And I love the analogy that you made because um, if you think that it's the beach that makes you happy, and definitely going to the beach, I feel happy. But there have also been times when I've been to the beach and felt very unhappy. And no, long, no matter how long I stayed on the beach, I still, uh, you know, on certain occasions, wasn't able to start feeling happy. <laughs> um, and so, like for me, it's those kinds of experiences that made me realize that it's not the beach that makes me happy because I can be at the beach and be happy, but I can also be at the beach and not be happy. And it's the same with anything else outside of me. If I think there's a person who makes me happy, well, most of the time, uh, for example, uh, if I say when I'm with my mother or my sister, they're two of the people I love the most in the world, most of the time when I'm with them, I'm feeling very happy. But there are times when I'm with my mom and my sister, and I'm not feeling happy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's um, uh, you, you're what you're talking about. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. So tell me more about what is the true source of peace? How do we cultivate peace? Um, well, this might surprise you and the people watching this because it's not a place to get to. Mm -hmm. Pace is already here. What mm -hmm. comes in between is our thinking. Mm -hmm. We can't really get to peace. We can't think our way to a peaceful mind. You know, it's more of, you know, doing nothing about it. Not in a way like, oh my God, I will be doing nothing. Like what's, oh, that's impossible. But you know, when, when, when we are doing nothing about our thinking or our, about our busy mind and just let this cloud pass by because it's really passing by, it's not fixed. You know, thoughts are ephemeral. They always pass by. It's like the cloud in the sky. You know, when we see the illusion of our thinking, moment to moment, moment to moment. We come back to that place of peace automatically because it's our birthright. Mm. It's our birthright. Like no baby is born depressed or no baby was born hating, uh, you know, black people or white people, or this is all conditioning and learn and the more we look beyond our conditioning, the more we look beyond our finite minds, the intellect, we are on a for truth. Because that's the where the beauty or the juice is when I'm aligned with this source yeah. that you know we call align our religion. And some people call it infinite intelligence. Some people call it God. Some people call it divine mind. Mm -hmm. All different names, but it's the same truth, same source. You might get, you know, different uh, words to, to say it, but it's all pointing at the same direction. Mm -hmm. And the more we actually, the, the, the less we engage with our thinking, you know, like uh, superstitious thinking, we come back to that peaceful feeling. Mm -hmm. we, we really do. The, the, the thing is that thoughts is the elusive obvious. Like we are all the time in our thinking. We have a psychological experience of life. Yeah. But we are also like a fish in water. If I go to a fish and say to the fish, like, look, you're in water. Fish will go like, what water are you talking about? What, what's water? Like, we are always in our thinking that we miss that we are having a thought-generated experience of life. So when we come back to that 
you know, place within us, not inside our body, but, you know, spirit or whatever you want to call it. That meditative space we get to, like, for people who meditate. We are aligned with source. We are aligned with truth. We are, like, all the scratches from the past, traumas, everything gets, you know, cleared out. Yeah. And we see the picture clearly. And we come back to peace. Mm. That sounds so beautiful and wonderful. So then why do we have a mind? It, it gives us so much trouble, it seems. And um, what should we do with it? Like, should I just give up on my mind? Uh, what, what, how do I relate to my mind then? Well, you know, our mind is for me like a, a phone or a laptop without internet. Uh. You know, so my mind is really useful. Like we are, I'm really grateful to have my mind, but I can't get access to many things or connect with many people if I don't have internet. So if I get stuck with my laptop, I would be able just to use what I have in that laptop. And that's, you know, the inf information I've learned and everything I know already. But when we connect to Wi-Fi, we have access to a limited data. Mm -hmm. And that's how I see it. That's cool. That's cool. So you're saying the mind has a function and we should be grateful for the function that it serves and also understand that it can't do everything. And so when there's other things we want to do that our minds cannot do, we should connect to these other parts of us, like the Wi-Fi, <laughs> connect the laptop to the Wi-Fi. So then we can access more and learn more. That's really cool. I like that. I, I, I also want to add that, you know, like with those apps, I can't fix something that seems challenging or problematic to me. Like even Einstein knew this, like he, he mentioned that we can't solve a problem that was created on the same level of thinking. Mm. And that's, to, that's like, a, that's a vicious circle because we're, going on circle and we can't get out of that situation unless we have a fresh new thought and so what i mean by doing nothing about our thinking it's not like not fixing the problem because when we let go when we don't grab into that cloud it's passing by when we when we you know let it go we have more space for fresh new thought that's gonna bring you know, uh, solutions to our problems, mm. to what seems like a problem to us. Because in actual fact, and I'll, uh, I'll just say it, um, there is no problem outside of us. Mm. It's always a thinking problem. We project those, you know, thinking into what we see. And it seems like it's a problem. And the moment we see that, like, oh my God, like I'm just feeling my thinking about that problem. I leave space for new thought that will bring a new feeling with it of peace and to solve that problem. If I might challenge what you just said, I was like, okay, well, um, but there's such a thing as reality. If there's an earthquake and the earthquake, you know, uh, makes my house roof collapse, that's a real thing that just happened. Or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if I'm hungry and my stomach's growling, but I have no food, in the fridge or any food in my house and I have no money to go buy more food, that's like a real problem. 
<laughs> that's existing. So what are you talking about when you say there's no problem outside of me, outside of my thinking? That's a really good question, actually. And uh, I have uh, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Mahima. She, uh, she, 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 she's from Nepal. And when she, she went there, there was an earthquake. She knows about this understanding that we share with people. And she had an insight in the middle of earthquake. She woke up to the fact that, oh my God, like the, it's happening, but I am present. So I could help people around me. I could, you know, save myself. And when I save myself, I, I, I help people around me. Um, you know, what we see as a, as a problem is not problem for others. And uh, like the, the thing that, you know, like you said about like, you know, someone who doesn't have money to, to, to fix their problem. If I get stuck in that thinking, and I did, I like, I had some days where I didn't have a penny to, like in London, I've experienced these days where I just lost my job, have my exams in, in, in a week, and uh, I have to pay my rent, and I don't have money. What shall I do? Like, this is a real problem. But you know, like, three or four days after, like, you know, just thinking and suffering that thought and trying to figure it all out, this lady, this lady called me up that I used to work for, and she called me in a really crucial time where I really needed you know, to pay rent. And she called me and she, she, said, she said like, Omar, can you come and work for, you know, this three days, we have this festival and we need, you know, more stuff. And this was like the perfect time for this to happen because like the money that I got from that three days is the exact money I needed to pay my bills, pay my rent and just be focused on my exams. And so when I look back at it, like when this happened to me again, I just know that like, I just put myself in, I'm just more comfortable with the unknown, you know? I don't know, but I'm okay there and I'm safe because I'm always being taken care of. We're always being taken care of, you know? And that's why like we, we are still surviving and human beings still exist. We are always being taken care of uh, by the source that we call God. It's just that sometimes, you know, when our thinking comes in between us and, and source, we are like stressed. We feel all this, you know, horrible feeling and we can't see a way out of that. And that is a problem. But once I, you know, I let go or just, or just have a walk in a park and really get present, detach myself from, you know, the illusion, detach myself for a second from my thinking, something will happen, something will occur to us that might solve the problem. If I might challenge you again, so let's say, in, in the story that you shared, thankfully, somebody called you and gave you a job that allowed you to pay the bills and so forth. But there are people who just starve to death and no help comes and they just starve to death, you know. Um, uh, or, uh, you know, let's say somebody who is attacked uh, in, in and, and they're scared and they're afraid for their life. And then they actually get killed. They actually get murdered, maybe even tortured horribly before they get killed and murdered. And no one comes to save them and help them. And they, and they perish. They die in, in that pain and suffering. What's going on there? 
you know, like I, I, I used to be scared of that dying. But the more I deepen my understanding into who we truly are, what is life all about? When we get glimpses of who we truly are, we are, you know, uh, we are a soul in a body. You know, so when my body, this body is finite, it has an expiry date. But who I truly am and who we truly are doesn't die. When we get glimpses of that, you know, dying wouldn't be a thing. Like if I die, just go, go back to who I truly am. You know, uh, one of the one of the physicists that is uh, sharing this understanding actually he did a talk on TEDx. Uh, you can Google him, uh, Shadrick uh, Mazaza. He's from South Africa, and there is this guy that uh, stormed in his office, and he was with a patient and put a gun in his head and he was like, give me your money right now. Give me your money right now, I'll kill you. And he went like, you can't kill me. You can't kill me. You know, he didn't really realize he said this until this, you know, happened. Like he didn't say it from his intellect, but he just had this, deeper understanding that he is not just the body. You know, the body is a vehicle to, to you know, to, to having this, this life to operate in this uh, beautiful world, but it has an expiry date. And that's not a bad news. Unless you think that's it, that's all there is. So when Shadrach Mazada said this to the guy, he went like, are you crazy? I told you to give me your money right now. I'll kill you. I'm not joking. And he went again, you can't, you can't kill me. And so the guy was like, he just crushed crying. And he was like, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do this, but my friend is in prison. I'm trying to, you know, gather some money for him to get him out of, of prison because he had to pay like a fine or something. And then he gave him the money and he went. Then his assistant came in and was like, are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, just, yeah, just uh, bring the next patient. And the next patient came and was like, it just happened. Like I hear, heard you, like heard this guy screaming. Because like in South Africa, they have this, this kind of, you know, situation happen like in, in the US, you know. Uh, I mean, here in Morocco, we don't really use guns, so <laughs> good, good, uh, good for us. Uh, but we can't kill our soul; it's intact. You know, it's like um, you know, when the when it's raining, it do, it doesn't damage the sky. That's who we truly are. And when we explore that for ourselves, so like I'm not saying to take my words for it, just explore for yourself. If you really feel that thing outside of you, or it's just coming from a thought in a moment. So we are creating our suffering in another way. We are creating, we are painting the picture that we experience. It's coming inside out. And it seems to us like, you know, you know, it seems to us like the sun is rising, but the sun never rises. It's just the planet Earth that turns in a, such a miraculous way around the solar system that it looks to us that the sun is rising. Like it looks to us that our feelings are coming from, you know, the bus or uh, the bills or this and that. I'm not saying that, you know, the bills are there, 
but they can't cause us to have a feeling. When we really understand it, we let go of, we, you know, our minds settle down. It's like when we play in a, uh, with, with, uh, um, that? with dust, for example, in a river, and there is dust everywhere. We play with it with our, uh, with our toes or our foot. And once we stop playing with that, the sand or dust go with dust. And then, you know, the natural state of the river is clarity. So we are the one creating our experience. And we say, I didn't do that. It's called the elusive obvious. Because we don't really see it until we do. And we forget. That's the human experience, by the way. We forget who we truly are, get lost, and then, oh, again, it's my thinking. And this is my experience as well. I'm not saying that I am happy all the time, positive all the time. I'm just okay with whatever I'm experiencing knowing that I am fine. And you know, when we know this, this is like hopeful for people. Like one of my clients recently told me, uh, my friend texted me and she told me, you know, we went for dinner and I called you and you didn't pick up the phone. So we went like, why well, didn't pick up the phone? And when she checked her phone, like she, she didn't call her. And she told me, I didn't feel upset. Is that normal? I told her, that's completely normal. You know what's not normal? It's to feel upset. We so normalized feeling upset about someone not reacting the way we expect them to react. I am ex expecting them to react. You know, if I don't take offense, I won't get offended. If I don't take offense, I won't get offended. We need to take offense to get offended. And so when I told her this, she was like, oh, okay. Like she really like got it. Like she got what I'm talking about, what I'm pointing her at. You know, like when I share this with people, some people look at their finger, but some people really see what I'm talking about, what I'm pointing at. Like uh, Bruce Lee, you know, he said on, on one of his movies, I don't remember exactly what he said, but like one of his students, like he was like, look there and he's like, don't look at my finger, look at the moon, because there the, the beauty lies. And so it's the exact same thing. You know, when I share this with people, it takes them by surprise because we are not used to hear this or to know this. And like, we wish, I, like, I wish that someone has told me about this before because I would have just avoided a lot of suffering in my life. Like, suffering that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, like, I didn't have to suffer just because I didn't know that I was creating my own experience and suffering that. Thank you so much for sharing everything that you've shared, Brother Omar. And I want to keep talking and I have to also <laughs> start wrapping up for today. Um, but I'm so happy that you are here and I hope you will come back and share more of your perspective and wisdom and insight with us. I would love that. Do you have any last thoughts that you want to share with us for now? Yeah, I would love to, like, if anyone hear this and have some questions, I would love to be uh, able to answer any questions or any insights for the people who are uh, listening to this. And uh, um, yeah, I would love to thank you again for inviting me and uh, really did enjoy this. And uh, thanks for your questions. Like I, I just enjoyed answering this question. Yay. I really enjoyed having you too. And we're going to add your contact information, your links, in the show notes so everyone listening please 
get in touch with Brother Omar. I call him brother because he's my brother in faith. Um, uh, but yeah, please get in touch with him. I'll also include my links in case you want to get in touch with me. So uh, yeah, I think that's it for us for now. And until we see each other again, I wish you lots and lots of peace and joy. Thank you. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samya Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes.